Today, what I want to talk to you all about is uh, less about family, as, as Steve talked about, and more about what's happening in the world around us, specifically when it comes to AI. Um, so my big idea talk is uh, about the fact that you are actually intelligent, not just artificially so. And I want to kick this off by, with a show of hands, how many of you feel some kind of fear, trepidation, concern uh, about what the future might hold? How many, how many of you feel some sort, maybe you feel excitement too, but how many of you are a little bit nervous? Keep the hands up. All right, that's, that's most people in this crowd. And so what I want to talk to you about is why it's totally normal and, and totally reasonable to feel afraid, but also why this is an amazing opportunity as long as you embrace AI as your competent colleague rather than as your competitor. So, first of all, be reassured that if you are a little bit nervous about AI, that's completely normal because every time there's been some type of a major technological disruption, people have been nervous about it. When uh, elevator operators first became uh, redundant, right? When we started having elevators that could operate without an actual person inside of the elevator, people were freaking out. You know, people said, how can you get into an elevator that doesn't have an operator? When uh, Craigslist was first formed and classified ad revenue dried up, people at newspapers, and I worked at a newspaper at the time, this is around 2005, uh, people in newspapers were really panicking because classified ad revenue was, for a lot of newspapers, about 25% of their revenue. And all of a sudden, the internet came out and you'd, I'd go to these journalism conferences and I'd hear people say, oh my, oh my goodness, the internet took away all of the jobs. Right? And then I would come to FinCon and everyone was like, wow, the internet created so many more jobs. And so you had exa the exact same moment in time, but people really had different feelings about it. And what actually ended up happening is that there was an adjustment period, but right now the, the elevator industry is bigger than ever and elevators are safer than ever. And in the field of journalism and mass communication, there is more opportunity thanks to the growth of digital publications, right? So there's an adjustment period, but ultimately things grow, especially if you have a growth mindset. So yeah, it's normal to be afraid, um, especially when as content creators, we see that AI can create all of these things that we have spent years learning how to do, right? We've spent years learning how to be really good at writing, at editing, at SEO, at design, especially, how many people here are freelancers, right? Like, we've spent years learning these skills and now there's AI that can generate thumbnails, that can do SEO, that can uh, create great designs for ebook covers and um, for social media. We, there's AI that can help give us prompts for writing blogs, for writing social media. So, the question then becomes, what is it that only you can offer? And spoiler alert, there are two things. One is that only you can be the curator, the tastemaker. And the second is that only you can build relationships. We're going to talk about both of those. We'll start with curation because you are the Anna Wintour of your brand, right? Hopefully you're a little bit nicer than Anna Wintour, from, from, from what I've heard. But it's up to you to take this massive volume of what AI can generate for you in your business and to curate it. And you're gonna do that with judgment, with discretion, with taste. You have the taste and you are, are the taste maker. And let's actually take a page from history here. Uh, and how many, how many people here have been in the blogging, podcasting, content, YouTubing, content creation space for more than, uh, we'll say more than five years? Okay, more than 10 years? All, all right, we've got, we've got some, some oldies like me. Um, about a decade ago, there was this thing that was really popular, it was called article spinning. 
right? And a lot of websites were using article spinning to uh, auto-generate these new blog posts. And what would happen is you'd put an article in there and uh, the article spinner would put in a bunch of synonyms and it would change it just enough so that it was technically an original or fresh article. Technically, it wasn't plagiarized, but it wasn't really something that appealed to readers. It didn't build that relationship. And it ultimately fell out of fashion, out of style, right? And that's because what it really needed, you know, and what we need now is for you as a curator, as, a, as Anna Wintour, to exercise judgment over what is it that's automatically being created that's good and what is it that's not. So think of AI as a colleague, a very competent new colleague. Its role is not to replace what you do. Its role is to simply be the newest hire in your company. It's the newest hire for your brand, your blog, your podcast, your YouTube channel. And your job is to mentor it just like you would with any new hire. Your job is to be its manager. And so how do you do that? Well, just like with any new hire, you very clearly assign it a task, be incredibly clear about what you want to do. You give it a brand guide, a style guide, just like you would with a new hire. Hey, here's the, here's the style guide for the voice of our brand, right? You give it that style guide and then you constantly give it feedback, again, just like you would with a new hire. You iterate, you refine, right? So that's how you can be the curator. But beyond being just a curator, you're also a relationship builder. And that's why we're here at FinCon. We're here to build relationships. And specifically, we build three types of relationships. We build relationships with other creators. We build relationships with sources. And we build relationships with our audience. We're going to talk about all three of those. We'll start with the relationships that we build with other creators. Because, speaking of which, by the way, we're going to, we're going to pause for a second. Turn to the person next to, to your left and say hello right now. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Turn to the person. T <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We got that started. We got that started. You continue the conversation after class. <laughs> but this is why you're here. You're here to build those relationships. You're here to say hello. And, that's, and what that does is when you create a great piece of content, when you create an amazing blog post, an amazing newsletter, an amazing podcast episode, an amazing YouTube video, people will naturally and organically want to share it. So let's take another page from history uh, to talk about what happens when this becomes too robotic, too pre-planned, right? So how many people uh, are old enough to remember blog carnivals? Yeah, there's, there's a few of us. So blog carnivals, and I, I, in the beginning of my journey, I participated in a lot of these. These were, um, these were groups of bloggers who would get together, and in a very routine and repetitive way, we would put link roundups on our blogs. This was like a decade ago. Um, and we, you know, in a very repetitive, uh, formulaic pattern, would say, hey, here's a list of links of ABC, uh, DEF, XYZ. And the thing is, it also kind of fell out of style. You know, people don't really do it anymore because what we're really going for is to create something that's so good that others can't help but share it, right? Create something that's so amazing that people want to talk about how it inspired you, how it motivated you, what you learned from it. And you do that by really investing in the quality of your work, and then also by forming genuine relationships with other bloggers, just as you did right now. Other bloggers and other content creators, just as you did right now. Because that's how um, real recommendations are formed. So blog carnival, similar to article spinning, kind of became, you know, it's, it's a fun memory, um, but it's no longer a thing that people really do anymore. Instead, people build those relationships, and that's what we're here for, and that's something the AI can never do. Now, the second type of relationship that you're going to build are relationships with your sources. And here's what was really interesting. Remember how I told you that um, back when Craigslist first came out, newspaper reporters, and I was a newspaper reporter at the time, were really nervous about the fact that classified ad revenue was drying up. But content creators, and I was also going to FinCon at the time, were really excited. Well, what I've noticed 
is that when ChatGPT came out, I was in journalism school at the time, and I noticed that some of my friends who were content creators, especially the ones who were freelancers, were getting a little bit worried. You know, what, what do we do in this era where AI can write and can design and can do all of these things that we do? But the journalists that I was hanging out with were not worried at all. Why not? And I realized it was because the journalists that I was hanging out with, their bread and butter was discovering information that is not publicly available. And that comes from talking to sources. AI, by definition, can only draw from publicly available information. So they were discovering information that wasn't publicly available because they were talking to people who were actual people in the room doing the things that are happening, right? And so your job as a content creator is to develop sources. Go talk to economists, talk to financial therapists, talk to financial planners, including people who don't have any type of public-facing social following, right? Talk to experts and professionals, academics who study retirement. Talk to them and find out what's going on because that's how you get new, original, interesting information. Right? So those key relationships with sources, that's something that only you can generate. And then the third, and perhaps the most important, is your relationship with your audience. Because your audience follows you for two reasons. They like your personality and they trust your character. Right? They like your style, they like your delivery, your tone, and they also believe that you yourself are a good person. And that's something that has to grow organically over time. It's something that cannot be forced. There are no shortcuts. It comes from simply being there every day, being responsive to your audience, serving them well, creating high quality material for them. And that's how that relationship of trust gets built over time. And that's also something that can never be uh, just automated away. So, what I hope to leave you with is that as we stand here on the precipice of what's going to be a very different content world uh, in the next decade than the one that we just experienced in the last decade, what I hope to leave you with are a few key ideas. One is that you are the curator. So yes, AI can write, AI can design, but it's up to you to curate what it creates. And it's up to you to think of it not as your competitor, but as your colleague, and prioritize building relationships. And so the final thing that I'd like to say is, fittingly enough, for a talk like this, this talk was actually created by AI. <laughs> a AI designed this entire talk. But what I did was I went to it and I said, hey, look, I want to uh, develop a talk about artificial intelligence. Please build me a talk. And this was the very first slide that it built me. And it's garbage. It's absolute garbage. And you can see the difference between the very first thing that it built and the final product, which you've just experienced. That difference, that difference is what you are building. That difference comes from iterating, comes from curating, it comes from you putting the stamp of yourself, your taste, your judgment, your discretion. That's the difference between this and the presentation that you just saw. So, thank you.